Rep Eris 1.0 is one of the most beloved current gen home gym products and actually cemented Rep in their new era of gym equipment. They now have the 2.0. The question is, is it an upgrade from the 1.0 and with so many other competitors on the market, is it still the king of the in-rack functional trainer? Let's review. Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I'm gonna jump right in. This is the Rep Eris 2.0. I'm gonna go through basically the differences between the 1.0 and the 2.0, which by the way, the 1.0 is still available. And also there are a lot of upgrades to the 2.0, but I still think the 1.0 is a killer deal at its current price. But the 2.0 has changed a lot of things. I wanna go through them, also compare it to others that are on the market and tell you whether I think it's worth getting here today in 2024. But the first thing I wanna walk through is actually the weight stack orientation. Come over here. The weight stack orientation has changed somewhat dramatically in that they've turned the weight stacks 90 degrees. The reason that matters is suddenly they've taken one of the biggest critiques of the Aris 1.0 and made it so that it's no longer a problem. And that was the fact that you couldn't incline bench inside of say the four post rack, or even in the six post rack really, unless you went off the front post. The reason that matters a lot is because the incline press is one of the best chest builders there is in the world. And so not being able to do that, I think was a big turnoff for a lot of people. They fixed that. It also allows it to have very little depth off the back. So as you can see here, it only sits off the back a couple inches really, a little bit farther than the depth of the bolts that you use. And if you put weight plates holders on here anyways, the 45 pound plates are gonna sit off farther than that too. So if you're really trying to maximize space, say on the four post rack orientation, this allows you to butt that bad boy all the way up against the wall. The other benefit to it is now changing the actual weight. You can do it from the inside of the rack right in front of you. So you see the weight at all times, you can also watch it while you're lifting, which is kind of cool, just going up and down. Especially if you're doing unilateral movements, it just feels kind of cool. Now, the other thing is the shroud. The shroud is included. They made sure to talk about this when they compare it to their competitor without saying their competitor, and the competitor is Rogue. And Rogue's FM series really matters. If you're wondering, because there's like a conspiracy theory out there why Coop hasn't reviewed the FM series, we have one on the way. I was waiting until they came out with the Rhino version because when they initially released it, they said they were gonna re release the Rhino version too. So I was like, well, the Rhino's the best version, so I was gonna wait for that. Well, they never ended up releasing it. It's gonna take forever. They put a new date on it. So we went ahead and ordered one so we get a review out. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe because we'll do a comparison to this, also do a full review on it. But the shroud on this is included. It's a very small shroud. The shroud only is protecting the actual weight stacks. The shroud's actually a little bit different than Rogue's. Rogue shroud is really on the sides to protect the cable pulleys. It does protect the twin stacks, but it's not as much about protecting the stacks, whereas theirs is just for the stacks. I honestly don't care about shrouds. My kids are out in the garage all the time and I just make sure they're out of the way of the pulleys when I'm lifting, not a big issue. But I do think that the shroud that they include, it is basically more compact, like the whole stack, compared to the previous version. And generally, I just think it looks pretty cool. Now, with the idea of making it more compact so you can fit the incline bench, one way that they've basically tried to integrate more of an ecosystem into the racks and benches, which I think is a good idea, is they now have cutouts to center your bench. So basically, the wheels will fit in there on either side of this. So you have basically a bench centered every single time. They do make it so if you want just as much space as possible, you can pull this piece out, the low row plate, and then put this little like mountain logo on there. I foresee a lot of people just getting rid of this and using the foot plate, but it is a nice feature just to have on there in case you don't want the foot plate in the way. Then to the actual stack weight, we actually have show the two different options. One option is the lighter weight, which comes standard. It's 260 pounds. The feel weight is actually 130 pounds, which I actually like they put on here, not the weight of the stack. So it looks like you got a ton of weight. It's actually the weight that you can feel. So the weight that you can feel is max 130 pounds. But if you want to buy the upgrade, just like the Aris 1.0, the stack is the same up to 310 pounds. This is it right here. Basically, if you buy that one, it comes with cone standard. If you want to add the upgrade kit, you just take the cones off and put it all the way down. It has the same length of travel on either side. If you're going to buy one, I mean, 310 pound stacks, two of them, 
You got a fuel weight of 155. That is up to 310 pounds. When you combine them on a lap pull down, that is ridiculous. If you're doing that much, bravo, but most of you are not, especially the guy behind the camera. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Essentially, it's gonna be more weight than you ever need. And if you're like, man, I just wanna have all the weight and I wanna never have to worry about upgrading, you can just get the full stack. If you want, you could even add like a gym pin here. Technically, you could probably add a gym pin and plates Although the plates would kind of run into the cables or this, but if you want like a 25 pound plate, wouldn't be in the way, no problem. You could just stack a ton of weight. The cables are actually able to hold 450 pounds, so you don't really have to worry about it. Now, one of my critiques on the 1.0 was the adder weights. I hated the adder weights. They're like these cone weights. I don't want something I can lose. I don't want something my kids are gonna play with. I just want it to be integrated. They realized that on this and took what they have on the Arcadia and Arcadio Max and included it in the Aris. So now, if you wanna add an adder weight to meet the in-between weights, you slide this down and it's ready to go. And then when you wanna put it up, exactly same functionality as what they have on the Arcadia, which is you don't have to do any pop pin manipulation. You just throw it up, whoo, ready to go. Very nice. Next is their trolleys. This is Rep's trolley system is upgraded. It's very similar to the 1.0 with some minor changes. There's basically two design ethos at play here between Rogue and Rep. One is designing for overbuilt, heavier, really unique and cool engineering. And Rep is the lighter, faster, quicker design. Basically Rogue's is gonna be very smooth because it has rollers. It's also gonna be very tight, also gonna look very cool. It has like the cool triggers like they have on their LT1 trolley series. This one is really designed to be light. So you can use it and move it with one hand. One thing they talk about is they're using this special plastic. The plastic they use is actually Delrin. It's just a nice hard plastic similar to UHMW, but doesn't mar or scar the rack. I will say on the Aris 1.0, you can kind of see how there had just been basically some scarring from the 1.0 going up and down the rack. This is just from the metal pin on the original 1.0 that scarred basically if you're trying to drag to the next hole, which happens a lot. So now you don't really have to worry about that because not only is the the lining Delrin, but so is the pop pin. Now, deciding which one is better in terms of the trolley system, honestly, they're both gonna be really good. It's more about what style you want. They do include a magnetic tractor pin, which is definitely improved over their old version. I actually like this one a lot. It's not knurled or anything, but I actually prefer the concave right here so I can just grip it and pull it. It doesn't have a very heavy magnet, something that's kind of annoying, it's just like a cheap, Magnetic buffer there, I don't know, it's just okay. But it goes in and holds very well if you wanna use it. I don't think you have to use it, they include it because it's an extra safety feature. But if you just wanted to use one hand, go up and down very quick, like you can see, very lightweight and easy to manipulate, which is nice. The max height of the rack for rep is 93 inches. They don't offer a taller rack. It's basically an 80 inch or a 93 inch. Rogue offers much taller options. So for some of you, if you're taller and you're using a longer attachment, you may have issues and may just have to adjust your setup a little bit if you're doing tricep extensions. They say on their site, they have one of their guys who's like 6'2 or 6'3 and they say he can do them fully. I mean, it depends what you mean by fully. If he's fully like locked in like you would do a tricep extension, it looks like it runs a little bit short. I think it'll just depend on your height and your setup, but just know if you want just the max height of any rack, this one rep, the highest one they offer is 93 inches, which may limit you a little bit on some of these front functional trainer options. Now, generally the trolley system is using the same components or similar components as what they're using on the Aris 1.0, as well as what they use on their Arcadia. The bushing system is gonna be the same, so it has the wide adjustment on either side. Also has a nice knurled handle and oversized pop pin that just has a nice, click to it, feels good, nice spring that like, it's very secure, you feel it when it's in there. Two changes though that they've made on this between the 1.0 and the 2.0, one is the routing of the cables. The 1.0, the cable that you'd actually use would actually come from the top, which means when you were storing it, when you wanted to do barbell movements, you take it to the top and then you use your J-cups right here. This prevented some people on the 80 inch unit that's more of a like basement dwellers or basically people with small, shorter ceilings. This would prevent you from having as much area to use for squats and things like that. Now, you store it at the bottom. 
So now you have basically the full use of the upright that you'd have for any movements that you want to use or other attachments. One reason I think they may have done this, they don't talk about this, but maybe it's because they're going to come out with an upgraded ISO arms for their lever arms, which would be sick. If you want to use adjustable jammer arms, I honestly think there's probably enough room on this back cable where you could put them in no problem and use them. Or I would guess that rep hopefully is gonna come out with a new version eventually and you can use it and integrate it with the cable system. Okay, the other thing they change is actually the width. So rather than being center on with the upright, it's now moved to the outside. I, I don't know if it's necessarily a benefit or a negative. We used to think that like basically the wider it was, the greater the stretch was. But if you think about like a chest fly, if you're in here, you're actually gonna have a greater stretch if they're closer together because you're gonna get further behind. So it kind of depends on your movement. I don't think it's a benefit or detractor. They don't actually talk about it a lot on their website either because I don't think they think of it either way either, but it's just different. Next change looks very similar, but is actually different are the pulleys. So now instead of being fixed pulleys at the bottom and the top for the low row and lap pull down, they're actually swivel as well. This is something you see on like higher end units from say Atlantis. They're a company that uses this often. You're really only gonna care about this function if you're gonna use the bilateral function of the unit. If you're doing bilateral alternating lap pull downs, the reality is when you're pulling, these pulleys are actually closer than the width of your arms. So you're really gonna be pulling more out like this. Because of that, if that pulley was just fixed, not only is that gonna probably decrease your cable life, but it's also probably not gonna be as smooth. This allows it to swivel out to the side so you can do things like that. The other thing, if you're doing certain movements, which a lot of people that get the Aris are thinking through like special movements, one movement you could do is like a chest supported row on an incline bench. Well, you're now gonna be able to converge at the farthest point with great stretch and then basically diverge at the top. So you're gonna be able to get a nice contraction at the top and also just a good stretch at the bottom. This is gonna allow it to do that with the swivel on the pulleys. The other reason I think they do this, this is just my guess, is they're probably planning long-term to create an ecosystem for their bench. So hopefully this can also connect to the bench and then use it for leg extension, leg curls and preacher curls. We recently got in a body solid bench that does something similar, although it's not very good. I think they could come up with an upgraded version so you can use the stacks and use these pulleys. And I'm hoping they thought through that and that's kind of why they came up with the swivel board. Okay, to the low row specifically. The low row honestly was probably the biggest critique, the one that people liked the least on the original 1.0. The reason being, one, it was too low. Two, it was wide, and the way that you connected them together was basically with this bar. In fact, it was so bad that there was even companies that came out and that were spawned, and all they did was they made attachments so that basically you'd be able to increase the pulley height, attach it to the top, and then you'd have a single pulley exit point so you could pull with. It was like that bad on the bottom. Well, they fixed it generally. Here's what I mean by that. They definitely improved it over the first version. The height is good. One thing they do talk about though, is using a decline bench or just even a flat bench. You see this in some of their marketing for rows. The height for that still isn't good enough. For me, this height, the way that I would use it is on the ground. They make this plate, which adjusts. You can pull it out and you can use it, they angled it so you could use it. If you back a bench in here, you can basically put your feet on here on a decline bench, or you can use it like this. There's a couple issues with this. One is you're not able to get like the greatest stretch as I think you'd really want, because you're basically ending here. Like there's no tension here. If I was using this for rows, I would definitely get something to basically put my feet further up, like some sort of pad or something, just so I'm further away. But you can see when you're pulling, the pulleys can move side to side or swivel side to side a little bit, depending on the movement that you're doing. I just would like more stretch personally, and I don't love using the bench on here. I think it's like, there's always compromises in all this stuff, especially when you're integrating this into an existing unit and making it as compact as possible. So I like what they've done here. It's just not perfect in my opinion. Personally, I would probably prefer just a single exit point. Then to the lat pull down, couple changes on the lat pull down. One is they're doing a fully dipped bar rest. This is nice, so there's not any metal on metal contact. Also looks kind of cool, and it's strong enough that if you wanted to, you could technically use this as your pull-up bar. I didn't see them recommend it at all, but it's definitely strong enough to do that, no issue. The other thing is they now have a new quick attach banana clip system. 
It's okay. I think it's maybe better than carabiners. Maybe. Basically the way it works is there's these neural knobs, which are pretty cool, they made them neural, but <laughs> it's got a twist and then pull. So here it is right here. You can see it's threaded. So you basically pop it in with these little pins, safety pins that stay in there. Pop it in, twist it to lock it in. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's fast enough to call quick connect because you kind of got to get up here. I mean, it's not bad, but it does take a little bit extra time. I will say the banana clip system they're using is vastly superior to the old one. It now swivels in many different directions all the way around. It's also shorter. It's just better than the old one. It's just, I'm not fully sold on this, but one nice thing about this is the assembly process on this unit is definitely faster than our experience with the first one. And part of that is because of the cabling here. Basically there's one of these cables on each side where you can detach this and then run it all the way through without having to undo the pulleys, makes assembling it much quicker. If I was gonna use this in my garage, the thing I would do is I would use the four post rack. The six post rack, I don't really need a cage inside. I'd actually prefer on a half rack. And there's a lot of stuff you could do on it. But one thing you would miss is actually a pull-up bar. I did notice on some of their marketing, they're showing basically a front porch Front porch is basically these two cross members that stick out and then a pull-up bar is attached. They are now selling one or planning to sell one so you can have a straight bar on the four post orientation too. The thing about the four post orientation though is you have to have front feet or they say you have to bolt it down. But then the other thing is I actually noticed on the renders, they always have back feet too because of how thin it is. So you really have to consider if you're gonna do a four post it's still taking up a bit of floor space because you have to have them on the back and the front. So for some of you, it may just make sense to might as well just put another upright and then you make that space usable. Okay, then to value. It's a lot here. <laughs> is it worth it? Well, here's what I'd say just off the bat. This is who it's worth it for. If you already have a rep rack and you want a functional trainer integrated, which I think some these are actually in some ways better than a standalone functional trainer because you have the uprights where you can add a lot of future attachments. This is really the option. If you wanna go with a 1.0 while it's still in stock, I actually think that's still a good idea. This is definitely an upgrade. Is it vastly different than the 2.0? No. The biggest thing that I think is better on this is the low row. That's like the biggest upgrade. There's other upgrades too, but I think that's the one that's most significant. The swivel pulleys are really cool too. The new trolley system is nice but really the one that I think is most impactful is that low row. And I think you can come up with something pretty easily so you can make the 1.0 usable and save quite a bit of money. But if you already have a rep rack, I mean, this is really the one that makes a lot of sense. The other person I'd say this is like an automatic for is somebody who's doing a lot of bilateral training. So if you're doing a lot of single arm, one arm, single arm poles, or you want to do a lot of alternating poles, this is really the option when you compare this to say Rogue. One of Rogue's like marketing benefits they talk about in their FM series is the fact that it has a single exit point on both the lat pull down and low row. I think for most people, they actually want the single point. So I think it makes some sense, but rep is like, let's just give them both options. And if they wanna put them together, they can do it themselves. So if you think you're gonna be using two different arms, I think this is a great option and also, <laughs> if you basically want to invest in reps innovation, because my guess is they're going to come out with some other stuff that basically integrates into this. So you can use this functionality, more functionality in the future. I'm specifically thinking of a bench, which I really hope they come out with. So if you want to basically be prepared for when that comes out, this is a good option. Now, is it better than the Rogue FM series? If you'd like to see our full review on that, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it. We have one on order that we will have coming on the way and we'll get a review on that as soon as possible. Okay, so one thing you're gonna have to decide is if you wanna go with the Athena or the Eris. When I did a comparison previously, the 1.0 Eris versus the Athena, I actually like the Athena best. I don't know, I still, I still may like the Athena. Reason being, and this depends on what you're doing, right now, I'm not gonna use the dual arm functionality a whole lot. Like, I would prefer a single exit point for the lap point and pull down and low row. For most of my training, I wouldn't even touch this to separate these cable pulleys. I would just leave the banana on there. That's how I would use it. If you're gonna use it with the separate, this may make a lot of sense, but really I like the Athena with the plate loaded lat pull down low row integrated. Um, 
but I, could, I mean, I can see why somebody would go with this too. All right, so there are a couple elephants in the room with rep right now. One, I'll just speak to them. One is the removal of the rewards program. <laughs> rep right now is like, what is he gonna say? The second one is the pre-order system and how longer and longer wait times have happened. So to the reward system, man, I think it's a bad idea to remove that because you're basically telling your most loyal customers, like, we're not gonna give you this offering anymore. And it's more so the way they pitched it as a benefit. It's not a benefit to remove a reward. <laughs> What's the opposite of a benefit? This benefit? A detriment. Yeah, it's a detriment. And you're seeing the way people are reacting to it. But then the other one is the pre-order system. Due to the way they're manufacturing these products, trying to basically go to the manufacturers and say, hey, we have all these confirmed orders. Basically that allows them to probably lower their price on the actual, like their margins. Um, that's just how it works. So will that be long-term? I don't know. I feel like in some ways they've done a good job with people say on the rep ends where basically people that paid the increased price got a kickback of like a hundred bucks. So basically you got something for waiting. I will say if you don't want to give a interest-free loan to a company, just don't do the pre-order system. You know, if you just want to, like you don't have to have it now. So maybe just wait, but oftentimes they offer price benefits so you get a little bit cheaper, so basically you're, you're out of your money. But if you're trying to earn the most money on your money, giving an interest-free loan is never a good idea. Okay, what do you think of the Ares 2.0? Is the differences, does it add up enough to basically buy it versus Rogues? I think those are the ones that are most comparable. Or do you wanna go with another option? There are many more budget options that we've reviewed. They're just not gonna have quite the same functionality as this. If you really wanna buy one that's like, this is the last one I wanna buy, this is probably it, at least until they come up with a 3.0. I would just say, rep, please do not come up with a 3.0 in like six months. <laughs> Give us some time. And I'd say like based upon the upgrades on this, there's only so much more they're gonna change on this. I don't think it's gonna, I think it'll be a long time before they upgrade on this one. This might be. Okay, this has been Coop from Garage Room Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.